After 25 days in Iranian prison, a CSUN student has been released on $200,000 bail. Soon, she'll have to stand trial. Back home, friends and loved ones held a candlelight vigil in her honor. Valley View's Chrissy McQueen reports. Friends, family and colleagues are coming together in support of CSUN's Eshim Omeni. The grad student was in Iran visiting family and working on her master's thesis when she was initially arrested for a minor traffic violation. Iranian officials imprisoned the 28-year-old in Tehran's Evan prison. Attendees at the vigil light candles in Momeni's honor in the hopes of her safe return. Although Momeni has been released from prison on bail, friends and family say that the fight isn't over. She will now have to stand trial for supposed crimes committed against the Iranian government. Well, it's a huge relief that she's even out of prison. That, that was the big nightmare. The fact that she's out on bail still gives me reason for worry because that implies that she's not out of the woods yet. She says, please, uh, 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 while she is grateful for everything that you've done for her, to not forget everyone else as well. Uh, thank you. Thank you again. She was just really good. She's very inspirational, very inspirational student. I saw her all the time. Every time, I'm sorry, every time I saw her, she had a stack of books in her arms that she had read that week. And at times, she would even have a book that she recommended for my own research. And here she is doing research for her own project, and she has time to recommend something for a project that I'm working on. Free! 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 Inside, I felt proud of my little Esha. This feeling gives me an inner delight and the strength of a young man. This brave woman roars like a caged lion, yet she leads a great symphony which will make the universe dance and lifts me like a light-footed angel up to the zenith of my dreams in hope of your immediate release. As a volunteer with the Campaign for Equality, Mameni advocates better treatment of women in Iran. Iran and all that makes it unique she worked with the One Million Signatures campaign in an effort to inspire change. Now signatures are being collected on her behalf to help secure her unconditional release. In Northridge, I'm Chrissy McQueen for Valley View News. The Iraqi parliament is calling for U.S. forces to leave Iraq cities by June 30, 2011. A vote on the proposal is scheduled for November 24th. The deal would replace the U.N. mandate governing the U.S. presence in Iraq that expires December 31st. Military veterans and active duty soldiers are able to pursue college degrees with the help of the Internet. Research shows that more soldiers and veterans are enrolling in online programs offered by some universities. At least 50 percent of active duty service members are taking online classes. Online classes allow active duty soldiers to study during their deployment and gives veterans an opportunity to work at their own pace. Somali pirates have seized a Saudi-owned oil supertanker. The ship was captured last Saturday, more than 450 nautical miles southeast of Kenya. The U.S. Navy says the pirates are transporting the ship to Somali port, where hijacked vessels are often held. Twenty-five crew members were aboard the ship. The Cyrus Star can carry about two million barrels of oil. And 11 weeks are down in the NFL season. Here's Travis Van Noti with the Sports Report. Chargers were in Pittsburgh last week in a game that would turn out to be one for the history books. First quarter tied at zero, Chargers running back Ladanian Tomlinson scored on a touchdown on a three-yard run. Chargers lead 7-0. To the fourth quarter, Chargers lead by two when Pittsburgh kicker Jeff Reed connects on a 32-yard field goal to put the Steelers up 11-10. Last chance for the Chargers, Rivers completes the pass to Tomlinson and let the laterals begin. Finally, linebacker Troy Polamalu tips a pass and recovers the fumble. The Steelers go on to win. It's the first NFL game in history to have a final score of 11 to 10. The Oakland Raiders traveled to Miami last week to try and get their third win of the season. Fourth quarter, Miami leads 14-8. Raiders return man Johnny Lee Higgins takes the kickoff and weaves his way for the 93 yard touchdown. And he's got the speed! Oakland Raiders with a chance to go in front. Raiders take the lead 15-14. With 43 seconds left, Dolphins kicker Dan Carpenter nailed this 38-yard field goal to win the game 17-15. The Raiders dropped to 2-8 on the season and now have lost their fourth game in a row. 
In other notable Week 11 NFL games, the Philadelphia Eagles and Cincinnati Bengals played to a 13-13 tie. It was the first tie in the NFL since 2002 when the Steelers and Falcons tied at 34. The Tennessee Titans remain undefeated, beating Jacksonville 24-14. The Giants remain the best team in the NFC, beating Baltimore 30-10. Tony Romo threw a touchdown in the fourth quarter in his return from a broken pinky to lead Dallas over Washington 14-10. And the Carolina Panthers beat Detroit 31-22 to keep the Lions winless. The Taft and Birmingham high school football teams were both undefeated going into their matchup last week in the league championship on the line. Valley View's Tim Nowak reports. Taft came out with heavy pressure on defense. Here, recovering a fumble lost by Birmingham quarterback Maury Crozon. Taft's defense putting more pressure on Crozon with this big hit. Speaking of big hits, in the second quarter, Jarrett Tryon crushes Devontae Brooks. But he still manages to hang on to the football after taking the hit across the middle. Taft got on the board first with USC-bound running back DJ Morgan, who took it into the end zone on a seven-yard run. Taft led 7-0. Later in the second, Birmingham's Trayvon Briggs takes the handoff for a six-yard TD, but Birmingham missed the extra point. At halftime, Taft led 7-6. In the fourth quarter, tied at 14, Crows on back to pass, but Shaquille Shelton is there for the interception. He takes it all the way in for the score. Taft led 21-14. Back came the Birmingham Patriots, though. Trayvon Briggs with his third touchdown of the night. They completed the two-point conversion and took the lead 22-21 with only two minutes and 28 seconds left to go in the game. Very next possession, Taft's quarterback Antoine Goodall dropped back to pass and connected with Morgan for the 65-yard touchdown, putting Taft up 28-22. Taft intercepted Crows on two more times in the last minute. Taft went on the win, 34-22. Although the Taft Toreadors won the game as well as the West Valley League title tonight, this may not be the last time these two teams meet as both Taft and Birmingham are expected to get top seeds in the upcoming LA City section playoffs. At Birmingham High School, I'm Tim Nowak for Valley View News. Switching gears, the Ducks beat the Kings last Sunday 2 to nothing. In the first period, off the four-on-two rush, Kings goalie Eric Ayersberg saves Kent Huskin's shot, but Corey Perry gets to the rebound. Ducks lead 1-0. Third period, Brett Hedekin finds the loose puck and fires it past Ayersberg. Ducks lead 2-0. But the night would ultimately belong to Ducks goal Jonas Hiller. Hiller made 29 saves to earn his first NHL shutout. The Ducks began the week in fourth place in the Western Conference. And that's all for sports. Now back to the news with Talia. Thank you, Travis. The U.S. Bureau of Land Management has announced a December 19th auction of more than 50,000 acres of oil and gas parcels in Utah. The land is within the Arches National Park. Environmentalists are calling the auction a fire sale for the oil and gas industry by the departing administration. The BLM says the sale is nothing unusual and is puzzled that the Park Service is upset. The BLM is also trying to open up 359,000 more acres in Utah to drilling. And a new research shows that women with a family history of breast cancer could still be at high risk even if they test free of two common gene mutations. Experts identify the genes as BRCA1 and 2. Cancer specialists at the University of Toronto conducted a study of 1,500 women from 365 breast cancer prone families. All the women tested negative for BRCA1 and 2 mutations, but five years later the women had four times higher risk than average women of developing breast cancer. Specialists recommend that women with a family history take anti-cancer drugs and undergo regular MRI, MRI cancer checkups. And up next, we'll let you know about President Obama's options for picking a puppy. And we'll tell you what William Hung has been up to.